Hey guys, welcome back. So in an effort to kind of show everybody more real world applications for everything with the machines, with technique, here we've got a, a catch can for a local customer that I'm gonna add a couple bungs to. So we're gonna go through the full process on how to add these bungs to this catch can. So our first two steps, we're gonna measure the layout of these bungs so our layout of the new ones matches. It doesn't look like an afterthought. So we measure from our backside to backside. You can see there we've got an inch and a half on center spacing. So I'm gonna take my new bungs and we will drill the holes an inch and a half on center so then my new bungs will match these. The other thing too is we don't wanna put them too close together. Obviously you wanna be able to get the fittings on, but we also have to have enough room to weld between them. So if you put them too close, you gotta think about your fitting going on there and also room to, to weld them. So now we know inch and a half is our old spacing. We'll make our new ones inch and a half so they match. And obviously it gives us plenty of room. So we'll lay it out on this catch can now. We'll drill our holes, clean the paint off, and we'll get started. We measure our bungs and they're just about, they're a little over three quarters. So we know we wanna have about a half inch of room up. So we're gonna make our first mark. We're gonna go ahead and go three quarters up. There's our inch and a half on center. So then we need to mark our center line. So we just kind of get this can squared up. These are almost 90. And there's our center line. So now we'll make a little divot for our drill to get started. We'll drill these out. Uh, we'll go small first. Then we'll use a step bit, enlarge the hole up to our bung size so this shoulder slips in. We'll clean the paint off. We'll make us a nice spot to ground the tank. We'll weld them up. All right, so now we've got our center punch. Line it up on our marks. Nice little tap. So I'm gonna start out with a quarter inch hole and then I'm gonna use my step bits and work up to the size of the bungs. So here we go. All right, so we're gonna be running our new Typhoon 230 today. Obviously, last time I was running it, I was running wide open. We're gonna make sure we're on AC. Click in to adjust our amperage. So this tank's like 090 thick with the bungs. I'm gonna set my machine to 181 amps. And I'm gonna actually go down and turn off my amplitude adjustment. So we're gonna run balanced amplitude and we're running advanced square wave. We're gonna go over, adjust our frequency up to 160 Hertz. And our balance, I'm gonna run 35% balance. Everything else looks good. So we're ready to start. All right, so I went ahead and cleaned up the bottom of these mounting feet. That way we can get a nice ground on the table so I can get the bungs tacked. And then I'll take my clamp and I'll ground out to these feet. That way I have a nice, a nice surface to ground on. Because if you don't, and you've got the tank like this, and you go to arc up and it arcs off one of these bungs, it'll actually burn a real nasty spot on the bung. So when you're working with something painted like this or powder coated, you want to make sure that you give yourself a nice ground and you clamp directly to it or else you'll have little arc spots all over your fresh tank. All right, so we just wrapped up welding our bungs. Uh, we can see we got no arc marks, so we had a nice good ground. Our bung spacing for our new bungs matches our old bungs, so it looked nice and tidy. Uh, we also had plenty of room to get between them because we knew we had that spacing right. But yeah, nice little quick fix. Um, Nice little easy job right there. 